My name is Brew Douthwaite. I am an independent consultant working on evaluation of innovation and impact. A theory of change is simply a story a program or a project tells about how it thinks it's going to make an impact um, or how it has made a impact. So a theory of change can be a story looking forward or a story told looking backwards. Um, we use theory of change all the time uh, in, in our lives. Um, something which helps people understand what it is is um, the idea of yeah, a project or a program we're all involved in uh, is the sort of project of raising our children. Um, we have some sort of theory uh, behind that, that if we educate them, send them to school, they'll go on to university and they'll become well-balanced people able to you know, look after themselves. Um, but we uh, develop that theory as, w as we go forward. Uh, we may find our child is not particularly academic, so then we don't necessarily send them to university. So that's the point. It's, it's something that you you have some ideas, some expectations about how things are going to happen uh, and you act accordingly, but then you need to check back periodically because if you push your child down an academic pathway and they prefer to be more hands-on, then you'll end up uh, with an unhappy child. Equally, if you don't monitor your project's theory of change going forward, um, you can end up uh, not learning from what's happening and not having the outcomes that you hope for at, um, in the beginning. Particularly with development uh, and research for development interventions, we're intervening into complex situations. We are just one among many actors. A project or a programme is only one among many actors. And so as much as you can plan, things will change, the, uh, the unexpected will, will happen. Um, Don, Donald Rumsfeld talked about the known, the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns. These are real. Um, there are opportunities that come along and if you can take them, uh, then you can get somewhere and go along a pathway which perhaps you hadn't foreseen at the beginning. So that's why theory of change is important because uh, and checking back on them is important because it, it allows you to both to first think about the change you want to see in the world but then also it gives you the space and opportunity to come back periodically and say are we following those pathways or do we need to uh, do we need a course correction um, and by doing that then you, you're more likely to have a development impact. A good theory of change is actually a story. It's a causal story. It, uh, it speaks to people. Uh, it's a story that has real people, real actors in it, which is located somewhere. Um, and so if you can cage your theory of change in those terms, then the, the people who may come in and review you or want to fund you, they are going to be likely to be much more sympathetic uh, because you're telling them a story. And as humans, we're, you know, we're hardwired to respond to stories. There are only a certain number of plots. Um, there aren't an infinite number of stories. You can actually break, you, you can categorize story types into plot types. So just as um, so, and, and someone's actually done this in, in the literature and has come up with seven story uh, main plot types. There's tragedy, comedy, there's um, quest, there's uh, voyage and return. Um, and so equally in research, in agricultural research, there are plot lines and um, helping people think about what is their main plot line. So, for instance, there is a, there's, a, there's a plot line to do with developing technology and then people adopting that technology and then the benefits that come from that adoption. So, so that's one plot line. And there are a number of projects which all work with that plot. 
And having realized there's, there's a, a similar plot, you can learn from other projects. Um, so that actually helps you as you think about how you're going to implement. Um, a, another plot, for example, is um, capacity. So agricultural research, the, the process of getting people together and identifying a common problem and some research questions and then going ahead and, and uh, tackling and doing some research together to answer that question. That actually builds their capacity, uh, their ability to experiment. Um, often people in communities feel empowered because they've been given a set of tools which enables them to you know, answer questions that before they weren't able to answer. And to do it together with other people, sometimes extension uh, researchers, so they develop linkages. And, and so that research process builds a capacity and uh, it empowers people who can then go on and use that set of skills and that capacity to do other things.